got this TP-Link uh, pocket travel uh, router and it's got wireless and uh, Ethernet it's a 10100 Ethernet by the way so here's the box for in case you're interested uh, I got this on Amazon uh, you, can, you, can find, you can find them in stores also that's the model Okay, it's a WR802N. In case you want to look at the box, and then you can pause and take a look at the box. Right, um, and, uh, it's got several different modes of operation. But uh, I find that uh, there's a couple modes that are you reliable and some that aren't. Okay, so here, here's what it comes with. It comes with obviously the tool, which I already plugged in, but I gotta unplug it. And it's not too warm. It's uh, it's okay. It's um, not too warm. I had it on for a, a few days already. Uh, continuous without unplugging it. Uh, when you first plug it in, you probably want to make note of the um, SSID here. Right here is the SSID, and then uh, the um, the key is this number here that says. Um, that you can barely see. So you have the key and the um, SSID here. And of course you're going to change them once you uh, get in there. And the uh, other thing you notice is um, they tell you to put, put in the um, um, address here which uh, it's hard to see. So hard to see, but this is TP Link Wi Fi dot net. A uh, better way is to put in the IP address because sometimes people report that um, it doesn't get anywhere. You can put in the IP address 16, uh, the IP address 192.168.0.1, which is standard for a lot of things. All right, so it comes with a, a bag. Actually, it comes with a huge bag. Um, there's a card here with all the information that I just showed you. Uh, you know, this warranty stuff and this uh, tech support stuff. And it comes with a quick start guide. But you could download it. You could download all this stuff. There's a manual. There's a 300 page manual, almost 300 pages uh, manual, and it details everything. It's, it's very repetitive, um, which can be confusing to beginners. Uh, it's very large, but it does have a wealth of information for you know, if you have some kind of knowledge of uh, routers. Then it, if you have a little bit of knowledge of routers, but not too much, you could learn quite a bit from it uh, on their website, TP Link. That, Tom, I guess. Uh, but it also has lots of mistakes on uh, on the, the manual that you uh, can download. They, they also um, have a firmware there, but I think that's the original firmware because it looks like the same as what I found on the device, and um, so so there's no update. So there's there's errors and there's some mistakes in there. Uh, it comes with a you know, cables, obviously, a uh, standard USB. You can use any USB charger. This one's a 5 volt, 1 amp charger. Power supply. You can use any phone charger. And you can use this to charge your phone if you want. It comes with a, a, a flat um, RJ45 uh, attach cable here. 
full Ethernet. It's got this very flat cable here. Flat, like a telephone cable. Except that it's Ethernet. And, uh, actually, not sure what type of uh, cable it is, but it doesn't really matter because it's a 10100, so you can use any Ethernet cable. So it's not going to be a Cat6 cable, I can guarantee you. It doesn't say what it is, but I'm sure it's not a Cat6. Probably Cat5, I guess. But uh, again, it probably wouldn't matter since it's a 10100 Cat5. So that's the stuff that's in there. Um, so yeah, uh, there's no battery inside. Some some of these are a little bigger, has a battery inside that you can use to charge your phone or whatever. This uh, is just what it is. It's just the device by itself. So there's no battery inside. You need to power it with a USB, micro USB here. Uh, this reset button here and uh, uh, Ethernet RJ45 there and um, so you just power it up and I already did it shows a green light like like you saw initially um, and the LED serves only two functions so when it boots up if it just flashes like right now where it just flashes on and off and on and off. That means it can't find a signal, either either wireless signal or um, plug in. So as soon as I plug it in, it stops. Uh, it it can serve as a um, like when when, it, when they call it a hot hotspot mode, which means it connects to a hotel's hotspot wireless. So wireless to the device, and the device has an access point wireless to your phone so that it, so it can work without any cables so it can work like this without any cables so from the hotel wireless to this guy and then this guy will connect to your phone or rather your phone connects to this guy and this guy connects to the, the hotel all wired oh there's some sounds some sounds loose inside but not loose it sounds like springy actually Sounds kind of springy inside for whatever reason. And as you can see, there's only one LED here to show status and everything. Just one LED, it's no other LED. The Ethernet has no LEDs either, so you can't tell if anything's happening or wireless, so there's no way. Um, I, the in hotspot mode, um, when you connect wireless to wireless, um, it, it can disconnect easily and uh, it's prone to uh, interference. So if there's any slight interfer interference, uh, it will constantly uh, disconnect. So like you're browsing, like if you're watching a video, it will constantly stop because it will constantly uh, flash that, like the green light that was flashing. It will constantly do that. And it's uh, kind of unstable. Um, for whatever reason, and there's been complaints about that too. And I've experienced that. I've tried in, in some places. I've tried um, it will constantly disconnect. And I've tried at home where it seems very stable. The Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi, wi this guy connecting to my home Wi-Fi and the phone connecting to this guy. Um, sometimes it seems perfectly fine. So it depends on your, I guess, interference. Uh, in its default mode, uh, where it's wired, um, you know, it seems seems very uh, reliable. I had it on for a few days already, uh, twenty four seven continuous in uh, wired. So if it's so if your phone's connecting to this guy wireless and this guy is connecting through a wired port, it seems to work uh, really uh, well. I'll let you know if, uh, if in a month or two months or whenever it, if it, if I experience any problems. But for the 
few days I've had it, only had it for a few days, it seems okay. I've, I've had it connected to a, a Linux device, a Raspberry Pi actually, where I have SSH to it and uh, I haven't been disconnected. So it's, uh, I guess, pretty stable. Uh, so what else? Uh, so I did a burn-in test. That's what they call it, burn-in test. When you leave it on for 24 hours. Right, what else? Uh, firmware again hasn't been updated, so I can't. I don't know if they're gonna fix the firmware. They haven't. Today, as of today, they haven't updated anything since it since it was. Uh, released and it's been over a year so over a year no updates now I'm curious to find out what's that that sound that vibrating sound so I'm gonna just open it up I'm actually very curious and I'll, uh, that's probably the antenna obviously but I'm just curious Probably the antenna that's making that springy sound. But let's find out. Alright, so. Uh, so that's what's inside. So yeah, it was the antenna that's uh, making that springy sound. Yeah, the antenna. It's making that sound like it was loose. So there's two antennas, so probably one as a transmitter and one as a receiver, unless they're both two different transmitters, but since it can act as a client and a access point at the same time in so-called uh, hotspot mode I would assume one's a transmitter and one's a receiver and they're somewhat separated and, and at an angle so maybe one's a transmitter and one's a receiver and so um, I wonder if you could focus on that uh, okay. Let's see. Alright, so I got I'm able to get really close to it. Alright, so that's what's inside. Hmm. So we're at an angle again. There's the antenna as I rotate it, so you can see what's going on. So it's actually pretty sophisticated for a little microscopic device here. You know, I'm curious. I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. See how, uh, see if it gets warm or whatever. See how warm it gets. I'm curious to see how uh, reliable it'll be in a situation where you leave it on. And obviously heat means bad. So let's uh, just take a look at that. Okay, so um, no.
I'm gonna leave it there for a few minutes and uh, come back uh, later. Alright, so after a few minutes, um, see the highest recorded temperature. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Top side, 103. Top side, maximum. What about the other side? Not warm at all on the bottom. 98 degrees, like body temperature. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, barely feel anything. Yeah, barely feel anything. So let's leave it out for a little bit longer. All right, so it's been uh, a while. Let's see if uh, the temperature changed any. Top side. Yeah, 109. So it got up just a slight more. And 103 maximum on the other side. So it's, uh, you know, it runs pretty cool. Because uh, when I had it on for a few days continuous, even with the box closed up, it was uh, barely warm. So, um, yeah. Alright, um,. So a few scratches, barely knows. It's not easy to open. It wasn't meant, obviously, it wasn't meant to be taken out. There's no screws or anything. There's two screw holes here, but no screws. One uh, light conductor here. What else? That's it. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, good day.